These are six of the most realistic ways to make money online without ever leaving home. To get started, you're gonna need either a laptop or a phone, and for some of these, there are no upfront costs at all. And if you stick around until the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a real brand by combining all of these or many of these ideas together, which in my opinion is where the real money is made. Let's get started. The first way to make money online is to become a freelancer. I guarantee almost everybody watching this video has some level of skill in an area that a business owner doesn't have or doesn't have the time to do. So for example, here's a list of people who have experience working in Excel and are offering a service to help businesses sort and manage their data. So for more freelancing ideas, here's a big list of some of the most popular ones just to give you an idea of what other people are doing. But do keep in mind that there's many more out there that we couldn't fit in the screen here. And if you truly feel like you don't have any skill to offer, then you can always begin with a more broader job like a virtual assistant. So there is always a way to get started as a freelancer. So how do you get started? Let's look at Upwork, for example. This is one of the more popular platforms. To get started, especially if you don't have any experience, I'd highly recommend picking just one skill and pricing your service at a really low price. You really wanna take on every job that you can in the beginning, even at a much lower hourly rate than you'd prefer. At first you mightn't like that idea, but initially your goal is really just to build up a portfolio of feedback as quickly as possible. That's what's gonna help you get more jobs and higher paying ones in the future. The key to this is to actually get your clients to leave you feedback. And to be honest, that can be tricky sometimes, but essentially you just need to go above and beyond and deliver more than asked for, particularly in these very beginning projects, and be very communicative, and you're gonna find that this is gonna greatly help your chances of getting more feedback from your clients, and then as you start to build up your portfolio, then it's gonna be easier for you to get jobs from there on out. Now, in addition to Upwork, one of the other most popular platforms is Fiverr, but depending on your skill level or the type of skill that you offer, there are some other platforms that you should also consider signing up for. Feel free to pause this video now and take a screenshot of this list. When I've freelanced in the past, uh, offering video production and photography services, I remember that one of the biggest struggles for me was getting paid in a timely manner. Uh, I, I just remember always constantly chasing up clients for money. It, it wasn't fun. That is though one of the many benefits to using a platform like Upwork. They actually act as sort of the intermediary between you and the client. So as long as you keep all the communication and the work on the platform itself, then you'll have peace of mind that Upwork will step in if anything goes wrong. So there is a little bit to learn when it comes to using Upwork or really any of these platforms if you're new to freelancing online. However, you'll find that they all provide a lot of information on how to use the sites, how the payment structures work and so on. Okay, so before you get started, it is important to understand the two major downsides to freelancing. First, because you're trading time for money, this means there are limits to how much you can actually make. With only 24 hours in the day, the only way to make more money is to either take on more jobs or increase your price. The second downside is that it's very competitive. Especially in the beginning, you might not win that many jobs, so you need to have a little bit of patience whilst you're building up your initial profile. However, even with these two downsides, in my opinion, the pros do far outweigh the cons. So first, freelancing is probably the easiest way to get started making money online. This is because you don't technically need anything other than an internet connection for most things, and most of the platforms that I shared earlier are actually free to join. So if you've always worked at a real business or brick and mortar building, then this is a great way to get introduced to the world of working online. There's also a wide variety of services that you can offer, making this a realistic side hustle idea for most of you watching this. If you follow a lot of our other content where we talk about selling on Amazon, then there's actually a lot of work out there related to that. Amazon sellers are constantly looking for help with product research, keyword research, photography, uh, creating listings, managing advertising, and lots of other things. So 
keep that in mind. Yeah. Also, when you first begin, even if you're not making thousands of dollars each month, freelancing is a great way to build your portfolio of work and start a career. You may even get a client that likes working with you so much that they end up offering you a full-time or part-time job. If I were starting out today and trying to pick one of these methods to sell online, then I would definitely consider freelancing. Because like I said, it's very easy to get started and you can begin making money almost immediately. Yes, you are trading time for money, so it's not the best way to make money forever, but it's a great start. The methods coming up can make you a lot more money in the long term, but typically take more time to build up. So freelancing is a great way to make money whilst you're building up some of these other methods. The second way to make money online is to become a content creator. A content creator is someone who creates written, audio, video, or visual content for a digital platform like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or even a blog. Now, in order to become a successful content creator, you'll need to have a topic to begin with can really be anything, sports, books, or a really popular one lately that anyone can do is traveling. Especially if you're just starting off with TikTok or YouTube, choosing a topic is key because those sites like to know what your videos are about so that they know how to suggest them to other people. So if you do 10 travel videos and then decide to do 10 cooking videos, the algorithm might be serving your cooking videos to the travel audience and uh, vice versa. So if you can, try to hone in on one particular niche or topic, or at worst, a, a range of similar niches. The great thing about this is that, you know, you can really make this about anything that you are very passionate about. As you've likely seen on the internet, people have been able to build brands and be content creators around pretty much any topic you can think of. That is what's so exciting about being a content creator. Now, we do need to talk about the pros and cons, however, because there are a few. The biggest disadvantage is that it can take some time to become a full-time or even a part-time content creator. Building an audience doesn't happen overnight, so even if one of your videos does go viral, you're gonna need to be constantly uploading new videos trying to repeat that success. Also, if you aren't used to editing videos, you have a little bit of a learning curve before figuring it out if you're wanting to do more video. But thankfully, this is actually one of the pros as well. There's a lot of free and helpful tools out there that make creating content a lot easier. Uh, TikTok, for example, has filters and effects to help you get started. And YouTube and Instagram also have lots of free libraries of licensed music and sounds that you can use in your videos and they also can help your videos get discovered in their algorithm. Now, if I were starting today and I wanted to be a content creator, then my best advice would be to begin creating content on the side of your current job or commitments. This is because it does take time to build an audience and then to go on and monetize that content, okay? Again, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't wanna go out and quit your day job immediately as it may take a little while to build up that income. So one area that I do see content creation pairing well with is being a freelancer, like we just spoke about earlier. If you plan to create content around the same things that you are offering in your freelance work, then it actually becomes much easier to create content because you're doing this stuff already every day. So for example, let's say that you're freelancing as a video editor, then it would come very naturally for you to go on and create content on how to edit videos or perform certain functions within video editing software. Freelancing also gives you insight into what types of content your audience might be interested in, rather than just stabbing in the dark, seeing what videos they like and they don't. So uh, for example, if you're a graphic designer, you might see a trend in the types of projects that clients are requesting, maybe uh, brand guides or logos or things that are very, very popular. Or if you're managing a client's advertising budget, you might continually get the same questions about advertising stuff from <laughs> different clients. These might be good indications that if, you know, uh, a number of people that you're working with are interested in these things that maybe a wider audience is too, and that might be a really good topic for you to create content around. The other advantage to pairing this with freelancing is that it might give you more flexibility around when and how you create your content 
because of course as a freelancer you're in charge of your own schedule. The next way to make money online is to become an affiliate marketer. So for example, take a look at this website here, thespruce.com. They write a ton of articles just like this one and in those articles, they often promote certain products that they'd recommend. So when a reader clicks on one of their links and makes a purchase, this website earns a small commission from that sale. So that's essentially how affiliate marketing works. Now, even if you don't like the idea of having to create a website, you can actually do affiliate marketing 100% on social media sites like YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. It's basically the exact same process between all of these. First up, you need to create a website or social media account. If you're creating a website, I'd highly recommend using Squarespace or Wix. Beginners often find these two platforms very intuitive, plus there's even a very large community of content creators that use these platforms. So if you do run into any issues, or come across any problems, there's always gonna be either a tutorial on YouTube or someone in a community that is gonna be able to help you solve your problem. Next, you'll want to do some research and pick a topic that is highly targeted around one particular niche. This is very similar to content creation like we spoke about before, or in fact kind of ties in together with that a lot. You can either choose something that you're very passionate about and maybe know a lot about, but you don't necessarily have to be an expert around that topic as you can still either find other people to help you create that content or do the research in order to provide that content. Here's an example of a YouTube channel that focuses on the camera and content creation niche. They created a video comparing two video cameras and are promoting each of those cameras in the YouTube description in the form of a affiliate link. There is a lot more to it, but essentially the point is you want to create a wide variety of content within one particular niche. Next up, choose an affiliate marketing program such as Amazon Associates. It's the largest online affiliate marketing program and it gives creators, publishers, and bloggers access to promote any product on Amazon. It's also completely free to join, so just head over to the website and click sign up. If you're using social media sites like TikTok, for example, you can simply add your links in your profile description and use a free website like Linktree to store all of your links in one place. Another option is a site like kit.co where you can group all of your affiliate links on different pages so that you can send people to one link and they'll see all of your affiliate links at once. Now, while you'll find a lot of affiliate products on Amazon, you can actually also go to a lot of different sites. So if there are other products or software tools and things like that, that are related to your niche that maybe they're not on Amazon, often you can go to their website and you'll often see that they will have an affiliate program that you can join up and you will typically get a link from them. And then you use that link in the same way that you would an affiliate link from Amazon. Now, once you have a website niche and products to promote, you'll need to start actually making the content. So to give you some ideas, here are the types of content that you can make, as well as some examples of what the blog post or videos could look like. With affiliate marketing, volume is the name of the game. So I'd recommend experimenting with all of these different examples. And by doing them over and over again, you'll eventually gain a better understanding of what your audience likes to see. Now, speaking of creating content, this is one of the biggest downsides to affiliate marketing. You always have to be creating content. And if you don't like to write or film videos, it could become pretty expensive outsourcing it to other writers or content creators. Also, unless you already have an existing audience, it's gonna take some time to get your first sale. So if you wanna get into affiliate marketing, just make sure to have a bit of patience because it's not a get rich quick program, it's more of a get rich eventually program. That being said, it is very profitable when you get to that point. But if you're willing to be patient and put in the work, affiliate marketing can be really great because it's easy to get started, there are no costs for getting started unless you go the website route and build up a fancy website. 
And lastly, there's so much flexibility to promote anything that you want. Could be physical products like we already talked about, or you could even promote digital products like software and training services. So keep all of that in mind. Now, if I were starting out today, I definitely recommend adding affiliate marketing to your list of income streams. As I mentioned before, this one is really well paired with the previous method of becoming a content creator. So if you're looking at doing that, I would just add in some affiliate links at the same time so that as you're building out all of your content, you've got those links already in place. Now, one word of caution though, whilst there is a lot of money to be made from affiliate marketing, I would urge you to be very selective about the products that you promote. It can be very tempting to just promote any old products that are offering a great commission, and it might make you some extra dollars in the short term but what you're ultimately sacrificing is the trust with your audience in the long term and even more potential gains. So my recommendation is to only promote products that you've actually used and truly do recommend. I believe that if you're authentic about your reviews of products, then your affiliate marketing is gonna be much more effective as a result. The next way to make money is to create a membership platform. Now, this is very similar to being a content creator, but whilst a lot of the previous platforms that we spoke about publish your content for free, the idea with a membership platform is to deliver high value content and benefits to people who pay a monthly or annual subscription. It's a really great way for creators to work smarter, not harder, and scale their income. So there are a lot of different ways that you can do this. You could start out with a content library, similar to how Shutterstock, collects media assets, or how 40 Aprons shares their food recipes. If you have a community of people who enjoy your content already, a popular form of this is setting up a Patreon account and giving exclusive access to those who join. Or if you have a certain skill and you think that you can teach it to others, you can even start an online coaching or training website similar to our course that teaches entrepreneurs how to sell on Amazon. One other example of a membership site is even using YouTube. We talked about it earlier as a way of publishing free content, but YouTube also has the option of uh, setting up membership tiers where people pay and then they can get exclusive content on your YouTube channel. So if you've already got a following, then that could be another good option as well. If you're thinking about getting started, these are some of the best membership platforms to consider joining. And depending on the type of site that you wanna create, you can join a pre-built platform like Patreon or create your own website with a platform like Mighty Network. But just keep in mind that in order to get started, there will be some upfront costs to consider. Some platforms may charge anywhere from 20 to $100 or $200 a month, Although some platforms like Patreon only charge a percentage of your revenue. So you'd wanna compare all of the pricing. Also, these sites can take some time to create and populate with content to begin with. You don't necessarily have to have all of your planned content ready to go on day one of launching your membership site, but it is a good idea to have a significant amount of that content available. Also consider that typically membership sites require you to drive your own traffic there. So they work well if you have an existing audience somewhere else, or you may need to consider using advertising to help bring in new customers. Now in terms of pros, membership sites are great because once you get a few members, you can expect to have recurring revenue come in monthly or yearly, depending on your structure. This makes your income more predictable and allows you to scale up your business with new tools and services since you can anticipate those costs being covered. You most likely will still need to update the content and add new content on a regular basis, whether that's every month or sometimes every week. But generally speaking, a lot of the work or the bulk of the work is usually done in the beginning. Now, if I was starting out today and I'd never worked online before, then building a membership site is probably not the first method that I would try. It is a lot of work and does require multiple skill sets to set up. Plus, it really benefits from having an existing audience. On the other hand, if you've already been creating content on YouTube, social media, or a blog, then a membership site could be a really great next step for you. You just need to determine the difference in value between 
the paid content on your membership site, and the free content that you've been offering. Obviously, you need to make sure that your membership site offers more value in order to incentivize people to pay for it. But once this is set up, it's a great marketing strategy to continue producing free content on these other platforms as it can be a great way to drive awareness of your brand and your membership site, as well as build trust and authority with the people who are then gonna go on and you know, hopefully decide to pay for your premium content. The next way to make money online is to build an online course, very similar to the membership site that we talked about previously. So the main difference between the two is that an online course is typically a once-off payment rather than an ongoing subscription. Each of these have their own pros and cons. Typically courses are more focused on creating a specific transformation or objective. So for example, a course topic could be something like how to do a handstand in 30 days. So once you've achieved that objective, you may not need the course any longer. They're typically within a set time frame that you're trying to achieve or learn something. Membership sites, on the other hand, are more common where the user receives new content on an ongoing basis. So examples include any fitness memberships that you've probably seen out there, where new classes are being delivered on a regular basis. That being said, you do see a lot of similar content that could be either a course or a membership site. One other big difference between the two is also the pricing. Courses are typically priced much higher up front. This could be say anywhere from $47 or all the way up to $1,000 or sometimes even more for very premium courses. Membership sites on the other hand, typically have a lower monthly cost, maybe $10, $20, $30, depending on the subject. Uh, some memberships of course can charge higher. So as you can see, there are a number of different considerations between these two. So you would need to determine which of these models is best for you if you're trying to decide uh, between a membership site and a course for your particular niche or idea. To create an online course, you first need to select your topic, plan out your content, and how you'll structure your course. You'll need to select a platform to host it. These are some of the most popular platforms. Then of course, you'll need to create all of the content, and then you'll be ready to launch and promote it. The cons for creating an online course are very similar to those for membership sites. There are upfront costs to consider, such as the cost for the platforms, advertising, and any other software that you might use, such as an email marketing tool, for example. There's also a lot of time and work required to create all of the content. Like membership sites, you do need to drive traffic to your site. Now, in terms of pros, Online courses can be very profitable. You also own your customer emails and you're building out your own business that's not just built off of someone else's platform. Online courses can also be somewhat passive. Most of the work is done upfront, but if you get a good system in place to continually bring in new customers, a lot of this work can be fairly automated and require a lot less work on a regular basis. Before we move on to this last method, I don't want this to be just another video that helps you come up with a bunch of random business ideas. Rather, this video is intended to help you build an actual brand for yourself. Now, building a real brand online has a much higher earning potential than just selling things under your personal name. While you certainly can do both, consider what Sean Cannell has done with his brand, Think Media, that teaches people how to become online content creators. Sean is doing a lot of what we already covered in this video. So he's a content creator himself on YouTube under both his personal name and his brand, Think Media. And in a lot of his videos, he's also doing affiliate marketing by testing and reviewing certain products. He's also got a podcast where he's got sponsorships and brand deals. And he even sells a few online courses, has a membership site, and offers one-on-one -on -one coaching calls as well. This is a perfect example of someone who's built their brand by combining a few of these different strategies together. Now, when I'm talking about combining these strategies, I'm not saying you need to go out tomorrow and do all of these things. That would just be way too overwhelming. Sean, for example, I'm sure has built up this business of his over many years, and then as he's perfected each of these different ways to make money online, he's 
added another one and another one and another one. Hopefully this example helps you think about how you can combine some of these ideas together to build your own brand. Now, if I'm just nitpicking here, the only thing that Sean hasn't done yet with his brand is selling physical products to his existing audience. But why would he wanna do this? Especially if he already has a bunch of other revenue streams that don't require any inventory. Well, I'll tell you why as we're discussing the sixth way to make money, which is selling physical products. So using the same example, while Think Media does sell digital products like their online courses, they don't currently sell anything that's tangible, things that people can actually hold on to and carry around with them in their everyday lives. So considering how Think Media's target audience is for content creators, imagine if they sold a camera bag or even a YouTube starter kit. Not only would they sell a lot of these to their existing audience, but they'd attract a whole new set of users who'd perhaps never heard of them before. Plus you can only imagine that there's a stronger demand for these types of products than there are people looking for online courses. This would only make their brand even stronger. They could even add a card within their packaging that gives customers a 50% off coupon to their online courses, therefore sending people from their physical to their digital products. This is a very specific yet true example of why your brand should consider selling physical products. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can sell online like we've covered today, but if you're a complete beginner, then I'd highly recommend starting out on Amazon as well. One of my favorite business models is actually how we made over a quarter million dollars in sales last year, and we did it by using what's called the private label method. The best part about this strategy is that you're building a real brand that holds value outside of Amazon, and rather than just selling products, one day you could even cash out by selling the entire business. But there are also other ways that you can sell on Amazon. So rather than creating your brand, you could even resell other people's brands by doing wholesale or online arbitrage. These are some of the most popular business models on Amazon. And if you wanna learn more about all of them, we made a full video that ranks them all from best to worst. I'd highly recommend checking out that video to see if one of those business models is the right one for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one. You're gonna, First, but, whoops, there are limits.